Good morning, everybody. We're live from the birdhouse and it is May 9th, which means we are right in migration season, which is super exciting. You guys are seeing all kinds of fun things in your yard and when you're out hiking. We've gotten a lot of your photos that you guys have sent in that we'll share today, showing some of the different things you can expect in your backyard or if you're going out hiking, some of the other birds that are starting to flow in. So as always, we love to know who's on. You can say hi in the comments. If you have any questions, you can throw those in the comments as well, or you can just say hi. Um, so let's get started because we've got quite a few photos here to share, which is really cool. So let's see. First of all, we do have some events going on too here at the store. Um, one of them is completely online. That's our caption contest. And our caption contest is going on until um, Sunday. And you can enter totally free online on our Facebook page. And the person who has the caption with the most reactions to it, so whether it be likes or little emojis or comments, uh, will win a $25 gift certificate to the store. And this week's caption contest is on this photo here of what looks like to be a young pileated woodpecker. So in order to participate in the caption contest, just go to our Facebook page, it should be pinned right up at the top, and put in your funniest caption for this photo in order to win. Another thing we have going on here this weekend on Saturday, Saturday is always a big day for us because it is the day before Mother's Day, so if you're looking for a Mother's Day gift, definitely pop in. We have a ton of different things, um, not just bird stuff. We've got all kinds of great gifts, and we're having a sweet seed promotion. So um, in the past, we've had Josh from the Sweet Seed Company on our live streams this time of the year. He's actually going to be in the store. Um, this is a local nectar company and they make this ready to use hummingbird nectar they make oriole nectars they make nectar concentrates nectar powders um, they're out in the syracuse marcellus area and so it's a local company and they're going to be in doing a promotion on saturday and the first 50 customers who spend 50 dollars more will get a free packet of sweet seeds so that is going on this saturday as well so it should be a fun day so uh, stop on in. That's this Saturday, which is going to be the 13th. So the day before Mother's Day. So in general, we like to look at migration this time of the year to see kind of what is coming in. And I left this picture up because this is just to kind of show you the difference, what a difference a week can make. So last week we were looking at what was going to be flowing in Tuesday, going into Wednesday. So this is a, a, um, a website. This is a picture from a website called Birdcast, which I like to bring up this time of the year. It's done by the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, and they use data from uh, the meteorologists to kind of predict what the migration is going to be like coming through the area overnight. Because keep in mind, a lot of these migratory birds do migrate overnight. A lot of the songbirds do, shorebirds do. Um, so they're flowing through in the evenings. So this was the projected migration going in from the night of May 2nd into the 3rd, so about a week ago. And you can see in the bottom left hand corner, it shows the number of birds that are flowing through the area. So flowing through the continental US in this map here. And where the lighter colors are, so where the yellows are, that's where the highest concentration is. And the higher it gets, the higher the concentration of the migration, the lighter the um, the lighter the, the color gets. So if there's not too much going on, it's going to be this purplish color. So you can see up here, um, even where we are, or at least where I am here in Western New York, there wasn't all too much going on in Michigan. It was kind of dark, um, but look at the difference a week makes. So this is uh, last night going into tonight, the predicted migration went from 196 million birds flowing through the continental U.S. to 433. So it has made a huge spike. So if last week you weren't seeing any Orioles or Grosbeaks, and if you're still not seeing them, don't worry, because look at the mass of birds that are flowing into the area. And you can see we're not even in that peak yet. If you look at, at, at least if you're up here where I am in western New York, 
it's it's starting to get better, but we're still in the medium and low side of the scale as far as migration goes. So don't feel uh, left out if you haven't gotten any of these birds that I'll show you photos of or be talking about. Don't feel bad if you haven't gotten any of them in your yard um, because I have yet to see my first Oriole in my backyard. I haven't seen rose-breasted grosbeaks yet. So um, you're not alone by any means. They're just starting to come in. On Sunday, we started getting quite a few reports from people about Orioles and gross beaks. So it seemed like Saturday going into Sunday, there was a pretty good push. So over the next couple of days, there should be even more. So this is the map from last night going into today. And then from tonight going into tomorrow, you can see that there's even more, uh, um, uh, more migration activity coming, especially if you are up here in the Rochester area along the lake shore, it's starting to get a little bit lighter. And then the night of May 10th, so Wednesday going into Thursday, even more is are, are going to be flowing through. So you can see there's just millions and millions and millions of birds that are going to be flowing through the area. So don't feel bad if you have yet to see some of these migrate uh, migrating birds in your backyard because they are just starting and some of them you might not even see for you know a week or more so as far as your sightings we've got some photos you guys have sent in some of the usual cast of characters that we can find here year round um, here's a pileated woodpecker that was going to town it looks like on the ground or on some kind of a stump that was sent in by randy it looks like uh female uh their female pileated woodpecker because she's got the black on her face there not that red stripe so cool pileated woodpecker um here's a picture of an american robin sent in by adriana and um, we've been getting lots of questions about people trying to attract robins like what kind of feeders do i put out to attract robins robins don't really come to bird feeders so much uh, because they're eating a lot of insects so the best way to attract them is to either put out what's called a robin roost, which is almost like a birdhouse, but it doesn't have the face on it, doesn't have the, the, the front panel on it. That's a good way to attract them. But really the best way to attract them is with a bird bath. They absolutely love bird baths. You can also put mealworms out because they will eat mealworms also. So if you're looking to attract more robins, that's a way to go. Here's a beautiful photo of a male cardinal sent in by Adriana as well so she's got robin and cardinals in her backyard and this looks like this was taken from inside a nest box here's an eastern bluebird that it looks like is sitting probably on some eggs here in a nest box and i thought at this point too i'll show you last week I showed you this video sent in by bob who got this video of the hatched bluebirds inside his nest box so right now if you're seeing bluebirds coming and going a lot from the nest box. That means that those eggs have hatched and they are probably coming with bills just full of insects in order to feed them. So really exciting time of the year if you've got bluebirds uh, nesting. Just get ready for them to be bringing lots and lots of insects. So if you want to kind of give them something in addition and uh, give them a little bit more food, mealworms are definitely the way to go. Uh, you can do live or freeze dried mealworms. They prefer the live, but if the live isn't for you, we've got lots of freeze dried mealworms. So right now in bluebird houses everywhere, there's little nestlings here. And if you're in the Rochester area too, I didn't pull it, but uh, we've been watching the falcon cam, the Rochester falcon cam. So Three out of the four of her eggs have hatched. And I believe the address, if you want to check it out, is ourfalconcam.com. Um, and uh, that is going on right now. Our, our live streaming, our peregrine falcon, which is nesting in the city of Rochester here. And you can watch that on YouTube also. Um, some other, some kind of interesting photos sent in. This was sent in by Karen, who was wondering what kind of bird this is and I think it I think it looks like a dove it, this could be an escapee sometimes when people have events they release doves and they don't all come back so this uh would be my best guess of what this is and, uh, kind of an interesting sighting there sent in by Karen and um here are the Orioles that started to roll in and like I said on Sunday is when we here started to get um, more phone calls we started to get um, picture sent in. I have yet to see an Oriole in my backyard. I saw a couple when I was out on a hike on Sunday. So I got to see my first ones and hear them. 
but nothing in my yard yet. So I've been keeping that jelly feeder full uh, because other things are eating the jelly, not just the, the Orioles this year. So I'm still waiting. And I know a lot of you guys are too. So don't, don't get discouraged because it's still early on. Like I showed you, there's a ton of birds still flowing through. So you know, don't get discouraged if you haven't seen anything yet. But here is an Oriole picture sent in by Stacy here. And this is on the ultimate Oriole feeder. And it looks like um, she's got some oranges on the, the top of the feeder there. On the, the edges is where the jelly cups are. And in the background, she's got her safflower logs. And those are awesome this time of the year. If you're trying to attract the rose-breasted grosbeaks, and if you've got a lot of sparrows and blackbirds and things that are draining your feeders really quickly, I would absolutely suggest putting out safflower or a safflower log like this. I just put two of those out in my backyard yesterday um, because I have so many sparrows and so many starlings, but they tend not to eat that so much. But last year I had grosbeaks just chowing on it. So I'm trying to kind of keep them away and attract some of these migrants. So that's what I'm trying. I'll keep you guys posted on how that works. But here's some more Oriole photos sent in. Here's one by Brittany. She had an Oriole on her jelly feeder. And if you're putting out just one thing for the Orioles, the jelly is absolutely the way to go. They like grape jelly. We have something called birdberry jelly, which is a mix of grape and blackberry, which they absolutely love. There's no preservatives in it. There's no corn syrups or artificial sweeteners, nothing like that. So it is perfect for the birds and they absolutely love it. So we've got plenty of that in stock for you too. Um, this was another photo of Brittany sent in. She said they've been at my hummingbird at feeder. So you might sometimes see the Orioles coming to hummingbird feeders because they do drink nectar. Um, sometimes they can't fit their beak inside that feeder, though. That's the main difference between hummingbird feeders and Oriole feeders that have nectar. You'll notice that the Oriole feeders will have larger nectar ports so they can fit their bill inside. And um, they usually have perches, too. It doesn't look like there's a perch on this feeder per se, um, but the, the Oriole is making do. So um, because the Orioles are such a bigger bird, they usually need some kind of a perch to sit on, but the hummingbirds can just kind of hang out there and hover and drink their nectar. Some more photos sent in. So this was from Sunday. Um, first Oriole today, I hung the feeder yesterday. This is from Mary S who's got an Oriole here on her Oriole Fest feeder. It looks like she's got some jelly on there. She's got some oranges. And another photo sent in by Liz B who said, we saw our first of the season at the feeder today too. So this was also on Sunday. Um, she says, sorry, low quality because it's through our kitchen slider glass. Now just waiting for our hummingbirds. Yeah, we've gotten lots of Oriole pictures. We've gotten in some gross beak photos, but no real hummingbird photos yet. Some people have seen them, but they're so fast. They can be hard to photograph. So no, no hummingbird feeder or hummingbird pictures yet, um, but people are starting to get them at their feeders as well. Um, and then this is sent in by Jen, who said saw our first at home and at High Acres today. So here's another one. She's got a feeder there that, that holds a whole bunch of jelly, and she's got her ant mode up there too. So when you talk about accessories you might want for your Oriole and hummingbird feeders, the ant moats are awesome because you fill them with water, and then the ants can't get down past the water to get to the feeder. And so you don't get them either floating in the nectar, which is gross and can make the nectar super moldy. And you just don't get them all crawling all over the feeder. Now, I like this one. This was sent in by Jack after we said, you know, put out your nectar, put out your, your oranges and your jelly. And uh, Jack sent in this photo of an Oriole just perched on his platform feeder. So you never know <laughs> who knows what he's going for in that mix, but um, they're hungry after migration, so you, who knows where you might see an Oriole this time of the year. Michelle sent this photo in. Looks like it's by a stream or some kind of a pond. And then here's another Oriole by the water. This one's sent in by Jen, and it looks like it's not only at a bird bath, but one that has a little fountain feature on it. So this is one of those little solar solar fountain inserts that we sell with the solar panel on the top. And when the sun hits it, it sprays the water. So that's really popular this time of the year, especially when we start to have some sun. And um, the, the moving water does bring in more birds. So not all birds will come to a feeder or nest in a house, but they all need some kind of water. So if you put out some kind of a water feature with moving water, 
that's ideal to attract the most amount of birds. And Debbie had some Oriole activity here in Brockport, New York. And you know, it's neat too. It's like, these are all male photos. Now that I'm thinking about it, we haven't uh, seen uh, any photo? Any photos come into us at least of female Orioles yet? So a lot of males rolling in early. Um, Suze sent in this picture as well. She says showed up for dinner tonight, and that's on the, the Clementine Oriole feeder, which is really popular. You can stick oranges on it, and it has some nice jelly cups. And then there's the rose-breasted rose beaks. Uh, I saw my first one yesterday. We had one. Uh, and the feeders behind the store. So I haven't seen them at home yet, but they are starting to flow in. And this one was sent in by Stacy. And then here is another one perched on a feeder here on the Sky Cafe feeder. And that was uh, sent in by Cassidy, who works here at the store. And here's another one. Looks like checking, possibly checking out Suet, checking out the feeder situation. And this was sent in by Dawn, who said this weekend in Williamson. This was also sent in on Sunday. On that day, people were starting to get lots of migrants coming through. Uh, Laura sent this photo as well. So the key to getting the roast breasted gross beaks is put something out that has the perching room because they are a larger bird. They're about the size of a cardinal and they do need kind of some larger space in order to fit on the feeder. So something with, with a lot of space, a tray feeder is perfect, any kind of a hopper feeder. But you can see that even something like this with a small tray on it is enough for the gross beak to land on. And they like sunflower seeds, so you can put out black oil sunflower, you can do sunflower hearts, safflower, any of those work just fine. And then Bob sent in a series of photos. Bob's always got some great birds flowing through his yard. He says, some birds you've been talking about during your live streams. Not so much the pine siskins, but they showed up yesterday. So he had here a rose-breasted rose beak as well and a Baltimore Oriole. White crown sparrow. I, I had a white crown sparrow myself the other day. For, for two days in a row, there was a white crown sparrow hanging around, but seems to have gone elsewhere. And here's a great catbird. And this you might see at your Oriole feeders if you've got an Oriole feeder out, especially if it's one with jelly or oranges. Sometimes the great catbirds will show up because they like the jelly as well. So keep your eyes out for that if you've got your, your Oriole feeders out. And then this is a white throated sparrow and sometimes they're they're more brown um, than than other times this one you can see kind of it has that white patch on its throat and then it also has this little yellow patch here in between its eye and bill so that is a white throated sparrow so you might see white throated sparrow or white crowned sparrow are both flowing through the area and if they're in your yard, they're probably not going to be perched on your feeders, but underneath kind of cleaning up some of the scraps that are under underneath there. So now when you put out your nectar feeders and your jelly feeders, you might get other things eating the jelly as well. And it looks like here he's got a house finch that's going after the nectar feeder. So interesting stuff. You never know what what the birds are going to go after. And then here's those pine siskins that he was mentioning on the spiral finch feeder, which is fun. The birds will perch on there and just kind of like go down the spiral. So that's fun to watch. But here's these are pine siskins. They look kind of like the female house finch, but you can see how sharp the bill is. It's very, very sharp and pointy. And then they've got this yellowish wash on their wings, which the female house uh, house finch does not have. So they look very similar to the female house finch, but uh, they do have enough differences so you can differentiate. Plus, you're more likely to see these on a Niger feeder and the house finches will feed from Niger, but you might more see them on a sunflower seed feeder. Here is a picture of a bluebird with some kind of insect in its bill. This could be the female um, going to feed those babies that was in that video that I showed just a little bit ago. So Bluebirds are definitely looking for insects to feed their young. And here's the male bluebird here. So some really cool photos. And I like this one too, showing some of the mating behavior of different, of, of different birds. Cardinals are known to do this where the male will get some food to feed the female. It's supposed to strengthen their pair bond, um, something called aloe feeding, which birds do sometimes. So it's pretty cool to see. So there's the male and female cardinal. And then here's a northern mockingbird. So northern mockingbird, you might also see at your oriole feeder. You never know. They do like 
the grape jelly and the oranges. So keep your eye out, you might just see them as well. And then here's an Eastern toey, something else you might see underneath your feeder. And speaking of white crowned sparrows, there's been some other sightings. This is what my photos always look like um, when I take them. This is a photo sent in by Rich who said, trying to get a better pick, but I've had one of the white crowns stopping by in the afternoon lately. And then the next day he said, my wife got him today. So we got a better picture here of that white crowned sparrow. So you can see how striking that black and white is on the top of their head. They don't have that yellow patch in between their eye and their bill like the white throated sparrow has. So they're, they're pretty large too. They're going to be significantly bigger than say your common house sparrow. So um, here's another white crowned sparrow. This one was sent in by Mark. It says, first time seeing a white crowned sparrow at the feeder. Yeah, this isn't the typical place that you'll see a white crowned sparrow, especially on a Niger feeder. But like I said, this time of the year when the birds are hungry, they're coming in looking for food. So you never know where you might see them. Some other sparrows to be on the lookout for are these little guys. This is a chipping sparrow. They've got the chestnut colored top of their head and then they've got that black line that goes through their eye. And then this is another photo of the white throated sparrow where you can really see that white throat patch and you can see the yellow patch in between its eye and bill. And uh, Mark sent in some photos as well from Cobbs Hill here. This is a wood thrush. And I like these photos here. You can see kind of the speckly colored on its breast. This is uh, a thrush that's related to robins and bluebirds. They're all in that thrush family. And this time of the year, there are a few different species that are in the area. And the wood thrush will nest here. They have a really, really beautiful song. And um, looks like Mark came across them at Cobbs Hill. Also Baltimore. Oriole, a bright, bright orange Baltimore Oriole, and some warblers. People are starting to report more and more warblers coming through. Um, love this little guy. This is a black-throated blue warbler um, that was also seen at Cobbs Hill. Cobbs Hill is a great place to go birding this time of the year if you're looking for migratory birds. Wonderful place to go. And some other warbler activity that you guys have sent photos in of. This is the Nashville warbler. You can see it in there. It's kind of blending in with those yellow leaves there of the tree. It's a pretty yellow warbler with a gray head and it's got a ring around its eyes. That is the Nashville warbler. This is a beautiful Cape May warbler. Another photo sent in by Bob here. You can see um, you might have to kind of look close, but you can see it's got kind of like a reddish orangish patch on its face, bright yellow with stripes. So really beautiful, striking migratory bird. And then yellow rumped warblers. If you go outside at all to go on a walk or go in the woods, you will probably come across some yellow rumped warblers. So they have the black over their, their face, almost like a black mask. They've got some yellow under their wings. And then they also will have a yellow it's called a rump patch and that's you can see it really well here in this picture on the back of the bird above its tail feathers so that is the yellow rumped warblers tons of those around really common warbler and they are definitely flowing in right now some other things to look for are pine warbler this was another photo sent in by mark who saw it at mendon ponds uh, pine warbler really pretty um, palm warbler it's got that chestnut, kind of reddish chestnut cap on the top of its head. Another migratory bird we've got coming through the area. And then if you are out and you're seeing something small hopping around, it might not be a warbler. It could be something different. We do have some kinglets as well, especially ruby crown kinglets. Lots of people reporting ruby crown kinglets. They can be hard to identify though, because you don't always see that ruby patch on the top of their head. And sometimes they'll flare it out like this, but sometimes they won't. So if you see kind of a very grayish nondescript birds hopping around a lot, look at its eye. It's got what's called a broken eye ring where it doesn't go the, the color, the white color doesn't go all the way around the eye. It's almost like in two different parts. Then you've got yourself ruby crown kinglet. So lots of them around. And if you're looking for different accessories for your feeders because things pop up as the season goes on. We do have a lot of different things that can help ease some of the uh, 
issues that come with feeding the Orioles and the hummingbirds. One of them being when we're having rainy and drizzly days, that water from the rain can wash away the nectar, but especially the jelly and the Oriole feeders. So we have a ton of weather guards. So absolutely, if you're looking for weather guards, we have those. Um, ant moats, I kind of brought that up earlier. In one of the photos, somebody had an ant moat and these are great. You fill them with water and the ants can't get around that water to get down to the feeder. So we've got plenty of those in stock. We've got the ant repellent, which is a little gel. It smells kind of like cinnamon or clove and the ants don't like that smell and if you put a line of it around the pole your feeder is hanging from or even around the feeder itself the ants won't cross it to get to the nectar so it's all natural it's made specifically for bird feeders so it's perfectly safe to put out as well as the feeder fresh this is the nectar defender it's called and this is all natural micronutrients you just add a little bit of this to your nectar and instead of the nectar being fresh for two or four days, it'll keep it fresh for more like a week or 10 days. So you don't have to keep refilling the nectar and keep washing the feeder out. Um, it will just make that nectar last longer. So really popular feeder or popular product for feeders. And then we do have some bee guards for different hummingbird and oriole feeders. And not every oriole feeder or hummingbird feeder has the the, the space for bee guard so it's just specific styles but we can show you which ones do because especially as the season goes on you might start to get more and more and more bees and wasps they're not so bad right now but as we go on their hives get bigger and they can be a bit of a nuisance speaking of bees it is still mason bee time they are still buzzing around so if you're looking to attract more now is the time to put out the house it'll provide a habitat for the female to lay her eggs and next year you'll have even more mason bees than you do now so um, they are hatching got some photos of some of the fuzzy little guys um, this is from my backyard when they started hatching out and that, that's one one of the little hatchlings that was just kind of hanging out there getting some sun so really exciting time of the year as we go on we'll have even more and more sightings about <clears throat> new and different birds that are flowing through and our next broadcast will be on saturday and come saturday there might be twice as many more birds to talk about so lots of fun and new things coming through the area and don't forget our sweet seed promo is on saturday so you can get a free packet of sweet seed if you spend fifty dollars or more while supplies last they gave us some uh, promotional stuff so that's a lot of fun so they will be in the store saturday from 10 till 2. and if you're out there birding and you're looking for a guide i've been talking about warblers a lot i highly recommend this fold out guide this is sibley's warblers of eastern north america and it's really nice because you can just fold it out and it kind of you can see kind of the whole cast of characters at once because some of them are uh you know easy to identify some of them like bay breasted warbler you know it's really really identifiable really easy to, to identify but a lot of them are just kind of yellow they've got some kind of markings on them so they can be kind of difficult to identify so i like having a guide i can just unfold and you can see them all at once so if you are uh, not the best at iding warblers which is uh the case for myself um, i love this guide and it's really helped me so i just like to pass that along too we do have those here as well so if you've got any questions or comments absolutely throw them in the comments here um, and we will have another broadcast saturday morning we'll be back with another one uh, steel monkey who's on youtube here says i've seen four orioles in the cape but no hummingbirds yet um so Orioles, it looks like, LOL4. <laughs> um, so yeah, it looks like they're kind of in the same boat of, with a, as a lot of us are, that they're coming through, some of the birds are coming through, um, but not all of them yet. So keep an eye out for those hummingbirds because they're usually a little bit further out, uh, you know, a little bit past the, the Orioles. They usually take like a week or so longer than the Orioles do to show up. So um, a lot of people haven't gotten a, their first Oriole yet in the yard. So, so just be patient because um, when it happens, it seems to happen all at once. So uh, Ed is on and Ed says, luck was with us yesterday when both a rose-breasted grosbeak 
and an Oriole, both males, showed up at our feeders. Also, most interesting, we've seen a fisher in the neighborhood near Mended Ponds Park in our backyard a few times over the past few weeks. How cool is that? Yeah, I should pull a picture of a fisher uh, for the next broadcast to show you guys what they look like. So fisher are, they're a mammal, they're in the weasel family. So they're, they're like a big weasel. They almost kind of look like a wolverine, but not as big if you're trying to kind of visualize what they look like. Um, and their populations have been expanding. So they're starting to be seen places that they haven't been seen at least recently. So that's really cool that Ed had a sighting of a fisher locally. Very, very cool sighting. Awesome. Um, oh, and I said, also of interest, the Merlin app reported an indigo bunting nearby, but I didn't see it. We've had them here before, so it's possible they're in the vicinity. Yeah, so if you are trying to identify something, you're not totally sure what it is, there is a great resource that you can have right in the palm of your hand. Um, if you've got a smartphone, I would highly recommend downloading the Merlin app. It's by the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, and it's spelled M-E-R-L-I-N. And if you take a photo, you can upload it on there and it'll help you identify it. It's not 100%, but it's quite good at identifying uh, identifying birds by photo. And then there's also a sound feature. So if you're hearing something and you don't know what it is, it you hit record and it will listen to the calls and it'll just make a running continual list of what it is you're hearing. So really, really cool resource. And especially this time of the year when things can be singing all over the place and coming from all different directions, um, it's, it's a really, really good tool to use. And it can help you spot a bird that you've been looking for. So it sounds like Ed had an indigo bunting call picked up, but couldn't quite get his eyes on it, which it's all part of the game. It's all part of the bird watching game. Uh, Lynn says, I had one in Pittsburgh last year with fingers crossed. So that might be about the indigo bunting and um tyler says thanks for helping me out yesterday we'll definitely be back soon you are welcome we are here to help if you've got questions absolutely give us a call uh, we're here to help you with any kind of your your backyard questions and uh comments and concerns um and oh it looks like we've got one more question here steel monkey says hi liz how long do i wait before i change the orange the orioles eat the grape jelly and the nectar, but they don't bother with the orange. Um, the oranges will last for, they seem to last for, for quite a while, especially not totally sure where you are, but um, at least it's not really hot out or anything yet, at least here. So um, I can leave mine out for a week if there's still some orange left. I've, get, I've been getting some other things that are kind of eating away at it, um, but I would say a week, you should be just fine. Yeah, that happens a lot if the Orioles have a choice of the, the nectar, the jelly they tend to go to the jelly so they might um or yeah they have a choice between the nectar the orange the jelly they might go to the jelly first and leave the orange and the nectar for later so that's not an uncommon occurrence but you can leave it out for about a week or so so it looks like that's everybody's comments and questions like i said we'll be back on saturday with another broadcast and definitely if you're if you're looking for a mother's day gift we have all kinds of fun stuff here at the store and we do free gift wrapping so i should mention that as well so uh until then have a great week and we'll talk to you soon Bye -bye.